Hello friends, this video on structure of atoms part 9 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's do a recap. See, credit of history of electrons and proton goes to Thomson and Gold Einstein. We have seen that. We have also seen that John uh, Th Thomson uh, proposed the, that the electrons are embedded in the positive charge, positive sphere, and that was the Thomson model of atom. Rutherford he did a famous experiment of alpha particles scattering and this led to discovery of atomic nucleus. So the nucleus discovery is by Rutherford, right? Electron by Thomson, proton by Einstein. Rutherford model this proposed that is a tiny nucleus for every atom and the electrons revolved around this nucleus but the stability of the atom could not be explained with this uh, model then the Neil Bohr made a improvement on this model by other mode and he proposed that electrons are distributed in the uh, different shells and these shells have different discrete energy around this nucleus and if the atomic shells are complete then the atom will be stable and less reactive so this theory actually uh, gave answers to a lot of questions which were unanswered, especially on the stability of the atom. Then Chadwick, uh, he discovered neutron pretty late in the game, 1932. And thus, we have three subatomic particles of atom, electron, protons, and neutrons. And these electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged, and neutrons have no charge. We have seen that. And the mass of electron is very less, almost negligible as compared to mass of uh, hydrogen atom or mass of neutrons and proton. It's almost 1 by 2000 times of a mass of proton and neutron. And shells as per the Neil Bohr model is denoted or designated as K, L, M, N. K can have at the max 2, L, N can have at the max 8 electrons, M can have 18 electrons, N can have uh, 16, 32 electron, the formula of 2N square. And the outermost shell can have at the max eight electrons. Valency is nothing but the combining capacity of atom. We have uh, studied about it. Atomic number is nothing but the number of protons. Please note, atomic number is nothing but the number of protons. And the mass number is equal to the mass or the number of nucleons in the nucleus. That is, number of protons plus number of neutrons. Electrons is not electrons are not in the nucleus. Isotopes are the element, atoms of same element, but they have different mass number, pretty critical concept. So they have same uh, atomic number and different atomic uh, mass number. And thus they are from the same element. For example, chlorine 17, 35, chlorine 17, 37. These two are isotopes of chlorine. Isobars have same mass number, but different atomic mass, atomic number. And these are two different elements. So we have seen the example calcium uh, 2040 in argon 1840. Let's calcium 2040, argon 20, 1840. So you see the mass is same. And elements are defined by the number of protons they possess. If you see, this is very critical. And this number of protons is nothing but atomic number. So atomic number is unique for a given element. Let's take some more numerical now. So the first question is you have to compare all the models proposed in this chapter. So the first model is Thomson model. So in this model, this is a Thomson model actually, also called watermelon or plum cake model. In this, he told that the atom consists of a positive sphere in which electrons are embedded just like seeds in the watermelon or icing on the cake. Total positive charge is equal to total negative charge. So overall the atom is neutral, right? And uh, these are held together by the electrostatic force of attraction, the positive and the negative uh, part. But he could not uh, explain the Rutherford scattering which was done later. And it was not based on experimental data. So it was not experimental. Okay. Then the Rutherford model, he did a good experiment by hitting the alpha rays on the 
thin gold foil and he concluded that the atom consists of small positive charge nucleus on the center the electron revolves around it and there is a very large empty space between these nucleus and the electrons this huge space between the nucleus and the electrons and all the mass of the atom is mainly in the nucleus but this could not explain the stability of electrons because the electrons revolving around this will eventually lose energy and the orbital bigger it will shrink or it will uh, collapse into nucleus or it will fall into nucleus so it could not explain the stability but it was based on experimental data right this is other form but it could not explain stability of atom and then bohr gave this structure where he gave postulates he told that the atom consists of small heavily positively charged nucleus in the center and the electron revolves it around it in a circular path and this path is called orbit so he introduced a term called orbit and he is telling that uh, he told that for a given atom these orbits have fixed radius and energy and these have different shells for example there is a k cell then l then m like that okay and energy of these shells increase as we go away from nucleus so this has less energy and let's suppose this has more energy okay and as long as the electron is revolving around a uh, orbital it will not lose energy nor it will gain energy but and thus it will not collapse but if it the electron moves from one orbital to, to the higher orbital then it needs energy and if the electron moves from higher orbital to lower orbital it will emit energy please note if the electron move from lower orbital to higher orbital it will need energy if the electron moves from higher orbital to lower orbital it will emit energy okay but in a given orbital the electron won't lose energy nor it will gain energy and thus it will not collapse so that was the model by bohr and then came the quantum model which is not explained in this chapter but this is the real model where this is the red one small red one is a nucleus and this is the dense electron cloud electron jumps here and there right and there's uh, you can't actually find a fixed position of electron at a given point of time it, it, there are so many laws sorenger equation heisenberg uncertainty principle which governs the flow of electrons here it, they are just jumping around here and there okay and since they are moving at such a high speed you think it is a cloud of electron so that is the model proposed in the quantum model define valency taking the example of silicon and oxygen see valency is nothing but the combining capacity combining capacity right so number of electron lost shared or gained to complete octet let me write here number of electrons either you lose or you share or you gain to complete octet this is called valency right let's take example of silicon silicon atomic number is 14 electronic configuration will be 284 now the outermost electron has uh, outermost orbital has four electrons let me draw silicon this is the nuclear this is two electron 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 electron and i have a more orbital it has four electrons 1 2 3 4 as per bohr model now this outermost electrons has four outermost orbital has four electrons so they are four valence electron so either it actually silicon shares four electron to complete octet because nobody will give four electron and silicon will also not be ready to give four electron transfer of four electron is little difficult so silicon shares four electron 
complete octet. So the valency is four. Let's take an example of oxygen. Oxygen uh, atomic number is eight. So electronic configuration is two six. So let's put oxygen here. One two one two three four five six. Right. So oxygen can either lose six electron or gain two electron or share two electron to complete octet. Losing two electron is out of question. It is not possible to lose six electron. Huge number. So either it will gain two electron or it will share two electron. In both of these cases, the valency is. Na plus has completely filled K and L shell. Explain. See, sodium number of atomic number is 11. So, number of electrons in sodium is 11. So, if we talk about Na plus, that means it has lost one electron. Right? So, it has lost electron. Number of electrons will be 10. So, electronic configuration will be 2, 8. So, if we talk about sodium, this has two electrons here. And this has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons. Right? And if you see this, this is K and this is L. So if you see the electronic configuration is 2A, and thus, if you see here, both K and L shells are filled. Okay. If bromine atom is available in the form of, in two form, in two isotopes. And this is a two isotope and the percentage is given. Find the average atomic mass. And we have seen how to find the average atomic mass pretty easy. So we'll take the mass of this, multiply by this percentage, mass of this, multiply by this percentage. So let's do that. 79 into percentage, 49.7 by 100 plus 81 into 50.3 by 3. So all this you get 80.006 and units and that is the atomic mass so atomic mass of bromine is 80.006 unit why because bromine exists in two forms bromine 79 and bromine 81 bromine 79 is 49.7 percent bromine 80 is 50.3 percent if you take average mass of this average mass of the bromine is this so if you take bromine no, normal national bromine the atomic mass will be this because national bromine consists of these two isotopes okay the average atomic mass of a sample is given. What is the percentage of isotopes? So this is 16.2 average given and this comes from this value. So let's assume this is a percentage and this is 100 minus a percentage, right? So if it is 10 percent, it will be 90 percent, 20 percent, it will be 80 percent. So let's put the value. So this is 16 into a percentage that is a by 100 plus 18 into 100 minus a percentage. And that value is 16.2 even. So if you solve this equation, you will get AS90. You can try this. Pretty easy. You can solve it. Once you solve it, you get AS90. That means this, this guy is 90 percentage and this guy is 100 minus 90. That is 10 percentage. And that is my answer. Okay. So if Z is equal to 3, what would be the valency of the element? See, Z is equal to 3. Electronic configuration is 2, 1. If electronic configuration is 2, 1, the outermost shell has 1 electron. So valence electron is 1. That means it either need to lose 1 electron or share is not possible. It has to or gain 7 electron or share 7 electron. But this is not possible. 7 electron is a huge number. So it will lose 1 electron. Since it will lose 1 electron, it is valence is one and this element is lithium atomic number three is lithium composition of nuclei of two species are given and given the mass number of x and y mass number is given give the mass number of x and y we have to find the mass number of x and y and what is the uh, relationship between this so proton see proton gives atomic number Right. So if we represent x and y, the atomic number of x is what? 6 and y is what? 6. This is the 
mass number is what number of protons plus number of neutrons right so nucleons if you see to add this 6 plus 6 12 8 plus 6 14 so this is 12 and this is 14 so if you see here these two have same atomic number but different atomic mass and thus this is isotopes and atomic number 6 is carbon this is carbon 12 and carbon 14 they are two different isotopes of carbon okay true or false we have to say all these statements the first one is thompson proposed that nucleus of atom consists only of nucleons no because in thompson model we had the plum cake model it was a big positive charge and uh, the new uh, the electrons were embedded so the nucleus word itself was not there in thompson model the nucleus word was given by rutherford a neutron is formed by electrons and protons combining together no the neutron is a different concept electron and proton is a different concept so that is a wrong statement electron mass of electron is about 1 by 20 2000 times of proton yes that is true uh, isotope of iodine is used to make a tincture of iodine which is used in medicine no because tincture of iodine you see is a normal iodine so you don't you don't need any specific isotope of iodine a normal iodine ordinary iodine solution is used to make um, tincture of iodine rather Ford alpha particle scattering of light was responsible for discovery of what? So we have seen that the nucleus was discovered by Rutherford experiment. Earlier, prior to uh, Rutherford experiment, we had the Thomson model, plum and cake, and then Rutherford experiment came and told that this is the nucleus and the electrons which revolve around. So it was a nucleus that was discovered using Rutherford experiment. Number of valence electrons in chlorine minus is how many? See, chlorine atomic number is 17. So Cl minus number of electrons will be 18 because it's a negative charge, that means it has gained one electron. So if it does have gained one electron, the number of electrons is this. If you write the electronic configuration, this is the valid electronic configuration. So the outermost shell has 8 electrons. So 8 is the valence electron because we are asking for valence electrons of Cl minus. Cl minus Cl has the number of electrons 17, Cl minus has 18 electrons. If you write the electronic configuration number, at the internal electron you get 2818. KLM. So the outermost shell M has 8 electrons. So 8 is the valence electron. Which of the following is the correct configuration of sodium? So let's try that. Sodium atomic number is 11. If you want to find the electronic configuration, 281 is the electronic configuration, and 281 this. That is the correct electronic thank you visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality education videos you can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website you can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website thanks a lot for watching